what's happening everybody welcome to the channel welcome back if you've been here before amp capo black adonis games today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting an ai character to follow us and climb and traverse in game animation sample project before i get into this i want to thank all of the new subscribers man and all of the like and love that i've been getting man i appreciate you guys so much it takes a lot of work to take out of my time as a solo developer to do these things and create these presentations because i have to actually edit the videos and everything so let's just say i do a lot of 24 hour stints man but i do get my rest you're always best when you get your rest remember that anyway let's go ahead and get into this video man we're gonna start with a clean game animation sample project and i want you guys to know that every time i get something fresh from unreal engine or anybody i always go to build and make sure there's no error so that's the first thing you always want to do that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to run a map check and it shouldn't take that long and as you see there's a couple errors so let's take about two minutes and fix them right quick all right first of all always read your errors so you know actually what the error is and you start to recognize them over time like i know all these errors as soon as i saw them all right so first let's just check this large actor actor receives a pre shadow and will cause extreme performance hidden less dynamic uh b cast dynamic shadow is set to false so all that means is you got a shadow on something that's big as hell and look at this this is the whole floor so yeah that's pretty big and you don't even need the shadows on. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna click on floor here. You're gonna go to the static mesh cause that's gonna always be the thing that contains or things, item or items that contain a shadow, possibly. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna turn the shadow off. Wow, that was not hard, was it? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and these are a little bit different it says uh of course we got the location of the get of what it is and it's in the persistent level and it's the eub open widget c has an invalid draw scale scale 3d all right so let's go ahead and look at that one so that is going to be these buttons here and by the way if you delete these and you're not using these then you don't have to worry about this you can skip this part and just move ahead but if you keep in the buttons here just for your debugging purposes especially the one the game animation widget which allows you to switch between character types you might want to keep that while you're developing and just move it somewhere where you're not touching it all the time so we're going to go ahead and fix this error right quick and basically all you want, it's saying is that there's something here being drawn at the wrong scale an unacceptable scale format so it told you it was the ueb open widget you see there's three of them here we're just going to highlight all three of these widgets and we're going to go down and if you look at your scale because it's saying draw scale you're going to see one zero one well you can't draw scale at zero it has to be something even point one but it has to be something so basically all i do is just reset this to one 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 you're not going to see any difference here it's not going to make any difference anywhere except for the fact that it's going to clean this error we're going to go ahead and build again and it's going to take a couple seconds longer because now you did something new but look voila no errors that's what i like to see all right so let's go ahead and start the tutorial let's get our ai to follow us and traverse on its own in game animation sample project now first i want to say thanks to treehouse bandit the person who inspired this whole entire ai follow in game animation sample project for me he did the first step is basically just showing you how to get the ai to just follow you now i'm going to take it to the next level and make it automatic first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your content browser and you're going to want to go to your blueprints folder and you're going to want to go and click on your sandbox character you can see i already have everything open here the next thing you're going to want to do is you want to type in update in your my blueprint search panel and you want to go to the one that says update rotation and click on that and you will get this window i'm bringing you here for a reason because sometimes this has an effect later on in the tutorial and i will show you that but anyway you want to go here and you want to expose this as instance editable 
And then I always expose on spawn as well, because sometimes I spawn characters and it's good to have exposed on spawn uh, set so that you can have access to some settings. Now, you don't want to overdo this because it starts to make a lot of referencing start to happen, but do it when you need it. So we're just going to go ahead and compile that and we're going to save that. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and now go to our sandbox character. You're going to want to create a child blueprint class and name it how you wish. I'm just going to put an AI in here so that I know that this is an AI character. I already know it's a child, so I really don't need that to be on the end. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the child part. And so this is going to be our AI following character. So the next thing that you want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and you want to open this character and we need to set some things up first. We're going to go ahead and go to the character movement and you want to set two values. One is you want to just go to rotation and you want to make sure that you allow physics rotation during anim root motion. You have to do this or the character will not work correctly. Also, you want to turn on orient rotation to movement. So once you have those two things done, we can go ahead and move on to the next steps. You want to go to your event graph. Okay. And in your event graph, we're going to create two custom events. All right. So we're going to do custom event. We're going to make two of these. The first I'm going to call check movement velocity. So check and velocity. All right. After that, we're going to make another custom event. And this one we're going to just call follow player. So these are going to be our two variables, our two events, I should say, that we're going to add variables to in order to get this AI to follow us. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go and we're going to create two timers for these events. So just right click and say timer and we want to do it by function name. All right. And the first one, we are going to just copy the name directly from here. You want it to be exact. So copy that. And we're just going to paste that in the function name for this timer. Okay. You want to set your timer for how often you want it to run the event for this timer. I'm going to just put this on point one and you want to loop that because you want this to continuously loop in the background. And this can be controlled as well. You can pause and unpause it when you want to. In this scenario, you can just pretty much leave it running. It's not that bad. Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create another timer. So type timer, or you could just copy this one, but I just want you guys to get used to finding the functions and things if you're not familiar. For this one, we're going to copy exactly. And the reason I say exactly is you can see here that I put no spacing between the names, but in this one I did. And if I and took the space away, this timer would not function with this. So that's why you kind of want to copy the exact name. Anyway, we're going to hook this up. We're going to put our event begin play, which is already here. We're just going to drag that over to this. Go ahead and move that up here. And this is going to be our timers. So let's go ahead, comment. I am -E These are our timers, right? Green means go. All right, so now we want to check our movement velocity. Let's go ahead and compile and save and do this often, especially in 5.4, because this baby can crash and it does. All right, not very often, but it does. So first we're gonna go ahead and do our check movement velocity event here. We're gonna drag off of this and we're gonna put do once, okay? And you just want this top one here, do once. And then we're going to drag off of that. You can do this a couple different ways. You should be able to just drag off of this and type try traverse action. So you want to do try traverse action. And then you got here trace forward distance. We can just type get trace forward distance. And you're just going to connect that into here. So this is basically just going to try to do the traverse action one time. All right. So next. What you want to do after that is we are going to put a branch and we want the branch to check if it fails. So just type branch, put that up there. Next, what we're going to do is we want to add 
movement input to the character. So we're going to come off of this. We're going to say add movement input, and you'll see it down here at the bottom. All right. And then we are going to put a delay on this. And for my example, I actually put this for one second, all right, which seems to work just fine in this scenario. After that, you're going to want to bring this back down and reset this do once. So every one second, this is going to check, try to traverse. If not successful, it's just going to go back down, loop, and keep on trying. If it does actually happen and this condition is true and, the, and it fails, it won't do anything. All right. So we don't want it to do something that we don't want it to do. So, and after it is successful, though, it will go around and boom restart what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and go down here to where it says follow player and we're going to create the follow player event so the first thing that we're going to want to do is come off of this and we're going to go ahead and create a branch and off of this branch we're going to have a variable so we're going to do this by getting the player character so let's get player character and we are going to say get unit direction vector direction vector here and then in the top we're just going to say get actor location and then we're just going to duplicate that because we want two of them all right and one of them we're going to leave as the actor itself the other we're going to plug in the player character and then we're going to basically get the distance between the actor which is the ai character and the player character so off of this we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a get distance to so let me move this up a little bit and we're just going to type in get distance to and we're going to drag this off of the player character get distance to and we want the target actor to actually be the player character so i'm going to hook this up and we're just going to break that top link so that this says self so now we're going to drag off of this and we're going to put a greater than sign and then we are going to promote this to a variable and this is going to be called follow player distance so we want to expose this variable and now that we have that we can plug this all into this branch so basically this is saying hey get the distance between uh myself and the player character and we're going to come off of that and off of here we're going to do another add movement input so we're going to come off of this we're going to do add movement input so this is if this is true if this comes back true we're going to add movement input all right and it's telling you what direction to go in. The direction is between me and this player. That's pretty much it right there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we got the scale value. You wanna leave that alone, leave that at one. That's just how much it's going to go after the character. And then you have force, which we don't need to touch that. But what we wanna do is we wanna take this movement direction and we want to plug this into that get unit direction vector as well. So now this looks like we already have what we need. And I'm going to read it back to you really fast. We're going to check our uh, movement velocity, which is basically every time you're going to try to traverse. And if the check failed is true, we're going to add movement and we are going to delay one second and keep trying it over and over and over again. All right. So we're going to go ahead and compile that and we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and play this. I think it'll be a good idea if we actually put the AI in here. So let's drag the AI in here. And we are going to turn him like that. And we're going to go ahead and press play. All right. So we have our AI. And right now you see the AI is not doing anything. It's doing a little stuttering. It's doing a little stammering. Reason is because we didn't put a value into the distance. So let's go ahead and go back to that distance variable which should be on our list over here. As a matter of fact, if you highlight your character and put distance and it says follow player player. So that's not what we, I wanted to call it, but that's what I ended up calling it. Let me go ahead and add it. Yeah, here it is. Follow player player. That is not what we want. We want follow play, <laughs> player distance, follow player player. No, that's not what we was trying to do here. All right, here we go. Follow player distance. Let's get it right. Let's get it right. 
All right, and then here, we're just gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna make it 350. Actually, I'm gonna make it 300. 300 is fine. 350 is all right, too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, and now we're gonna uh, also make sure that we set our timer here for follow player. I set this one to 0 0.01, my bad. I knew there was something else that was not right. And we're gonna set that to looping, so. You want to make sure that your timers are set. You want to make sure that there's a time in them and you want to make sure that they're looping. That will definitely not work if this timer is not looping. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to press play and we're going to see what we got here. So let's press play. All right, and you see your character. What's happening? Characters walking backwards to you. Not exactly what we want, right? See how the player was backing up towards you? That is due to what I had us set up in the very beginning, where I set up that variable wants to strafe. So what we want to do is click on your sandbox character and you want to turn this off. You want to make sure that's off. Otherwise, the player is going to strafe and it's never going to turn to actually face you unless you're in front of it. So now we can compile, we can save this, press play, and now your character should be running towards you and your character should turn and follow you. All right. Now let's go ahead and start traversing here. And you'll see that your character now will traverse anywhere that you do. So, and it will do pretty much whatever to try to get to where you are and does a pretty good job. Now you can see it's starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and that's something that I'm going to work on in my character, but pretty much anywhere you go, this character is going to go. All right. And it uses all the same traversal actions because it's using the exact same blueprint as your character. So I have it set to do it every one second because that's good enough. You can set it to be a smoother time or more delayed time. I will say that in some very, very tall instances, the character would not reach up to traverse the blocks. What's better and best is if you use that component that I had told you guys about, the climb anything component, I would get that. And that way you don't even have to worry about setting these blocks up. You can pretty much traverse whatever, but this is it. That's how you do it. That's how you get your character to follow you and to climb without you having to press any buttons or do anything to make it happen. Character just does it. Anyway, let me know what you think of the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share the content, and hit the notifications so you know when I'm dropping something new. I'll be back with another one. Amp Capo, Black Adonis Games.